everyone. Welcome back to In Her Rubber Boots. So today I want to talk to you about Advent. So I'm sure a lot of you grew up with having a chocolate every day leading up to Christmas. You know, one of those boards, you open up the little flap and you take out a chocolate every day. Those are awesome, but there's a lot of other ways that you can do Advent as well. Let's start by talking about the chocolate or candy method. So if you want to do that, that is fantastic. I would recommend getting a reusable Advent, either kind of calendar or some pouches or something along those lines that you can put candy or chocolate in. So that way every year you just buy the chocolate or the candy and you don't have to worry about spending a lot of money on an expensive one just to get good quality tasting chocolate. So I got this one here at Winners. I want to say I paid $25 for it. Sometimes they can be hard to find, but it's one of those things that once you own it, you can reuse it every year. So it's worth spending extra money on or, you know, looking around and keeping an eye out during the year so that when you do find one, you definitely buy it. Now, if you're crafty, you could also make it. I've seen really cool ones with just like hanging with pouches or there's lots of ones where you can sort of wrap up little uh, containers or boxes or bags and have numbers on them and just open them that way as well. So that's definitely something we are doing. But I also like to do other things as well. I think that Christmas is a super exciting time, obviously, but it only lasts for one day. And I think especially for kids, one day is just too much because everything gets crammed into one day, they get a million presents, they see a million people, and then it's over and they're cranky and they're overwhelmed by the amount of things that they got. So I like to spread Christmas out and I think Advent is a perfect way to spread Christmas out. So having 24 items or gifts leading up to Christmas, um, maybe it seems excessive, but if you do it in the ways that I'm gonna show you now, I think you can do it such that it's not excessive and it's a great way to get into the Christmas spirit and have Christmas last for a lot longer rather than just that one intense day. So for us right now, my favorite thing is, is I have been collecting a bunch of Christmas books. And I really think that this is a perfect way to spread out the Christmas time and give us something little and exciting every day and also have it that it's something not chocolate and something that is um, not a toy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap up each one of these and put a number on them. And then every day we will find the corresponding number to go with the day. And we will count it down with the books. Now I realize that if you go and buy all these books brand new, it's probably an expensive investment. But if you look for them secondhand or at garage sales like I've done over the whole year, um, you can easily collect 24 books. I'm pretty close to 24. I'm still on the lookout for a couple of, um, you know, new books. But once I have all of those, every year I can reuse them. So it really is just a one-time investment. I also like the idea of not just using one thing. So instead of just having books, you could also do books for some of the days. And then on the night that you know you want to do a movie, wrap up a movie and have it as one of the ones. If you label them with numbers and then keep a notepad or something letting you know what is in them, then you can always mix them around if you need to based on what you're doing that day. You also can do that if you find uh, it's hard to have large items for Advent. You could also do that you write something on a piece of paper and hang it on, say, a little tree or even just put it in a jar. And so every day you pull out a piece of paper, whether it's set for that day or just an idea. Um, but maybe the piece of paper says something like have a movie night or do a Christmas craft or go for a drive and look at Christmas lights or make hot chocolate. There's so many ideas and then you can just write them on a piece of paper and it's, it's still exciting because the paper means something, uh, but you don't have to wrap up so many things. Another great idea, and maybe you've seen this before, is when you buy ones like, let's say, Lego or Playmobil, and they have these um, kind of sets, and so every day you open up a new piece of it, and then um, in the end, you've got a whole set. Now, those can be expensive to buy, so you could do that. The other option is, if you use something reusable or wrap up some stuff for each day, you could also make that yourself. You know, just buy a set, 
wrap up the different pieces and then you know as the time goes on they can either build it or play with it with each piece that they get every day now another idea that I thought was kind of cool is to buy a puzzle and wrap up a few pieces for each day so if you have really little kids maybe you only want to buy a 24 piece puzzle but if you've got bigger kids maybe you want to buy a thousand piece puzzle and just randomly you know split up your pieces and see how many you can fit together every day and then by the end you will have put together the puzzle another fun idea is to hang a christmas ornament up for every day of the week so you can either have those say wrapped up somewhere that they open it or maybe they're just in a basket, but every day they get to maybe open up their chocolate in a book and hang up one Christmas ornament on the tree. Another thing that I like to do is towards Christmas is to actually use some of the gifts that I'm going to be giving to the kids as Advent presents. So say on like the 22nd, 23rd, 24th to do actual presents. So maybe they're going to get a pair of pajamas or a game or something that I was going to give as a Christmas present and then that helps to spread out Christmas. Of course you could also keep it really simple and do something like this sticker chart where every day they just get a sticker to count down to Christmas. It doesn't have to have to be fancy for the kids to enjoy it and you don't have to spend a lot of money to get into the Christmas spirit. So if Advent is not for you and you feel like you already have an excessive amount of stuff, your kids have an excessive amount of stuff, and Advent is just like more stuff, you can also do reverse Advent. And there's a couple of ways of doing this. One of the ways of doing it is to um, give things to like a food bank or to some sort of a charity. So you can find out what they need and have a box and every day put an item, a food item or a toiletry or something in a box as a way to kind of teach your kids, um, you know, to give back as well as a way to do something that's not about you. Another great one is decluttering. There's different challenges you can follow, uh, but essentially just getting rid of some stuff before you bring in more things. So maybe it's just an item a day for the month of December, or maybe it's one item on December 1st, two items on December 2nd, etc. And then by the end, uh, or at least by Christmas, you've gotten rid of a lot of stuff because you're probably going to bring in a lot of stuff. So at least then you feel like you've gotten rid of things and maybe it's not so overwhelming to bring new items into your home. Another one that I really like is um, having your kids give back. So having them pick an item every day that they want to get rid of or give to some other needy child or, um, you know, whatever you want to tell them or, you know, choose to give those toys to. Um, but have them pick something every day so that way by the time you get to Christmas and they're getting more things, you've gotten rid of uh, at least 24 items prior to Christmas. So I have picked up a few more books to add to my Christmas um, Advent. So A Stable in Bethlehem, Christmas Songs. This one's cute because it actually plays the songs. I won't play it for you. It's annoying. I'm probably not going to give that till closer to Christmas because I don't want to listen to it for 24 days. This one's cute. It's like, you know, the teddy bear Christmas or the teddy bear picnic, but this is the Christmas version. The perfect tree. I like this because it was a little bit more wordy. So it's a little longer story. And God gave us Christmas. This one actually came from my cousin. So that's perfect. I definitely have enough now to go for um, all of Advent. Or if I have any extra, I will just start it a couple of days early. Well, I hope that gave you guys some ideas on things to do for Advent. I'd love to know in the comments below, what do you do for Advent? Do you have some sort of tradition or uh, other idea of how you celebrate leading up to Christmas? I would love to know. And if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, I would love it if you would subscribe. I have a lot of Christmas content coming up as well as farm style vlogs um, and lots of frugal living. So if any of that sounds good, hit that subscribe button and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!